Good evening, Jills fans. Welcome back to Jills in the Blood TV for another Monday review as I take a little look back at Saturday's two-all draw at Shrewsbury, uh, which stopped a run of consecutive defeats for the Jills. Um, yes, the winless run does continue and we are still entrenched in the bottom four at the moment, but um, probably more positives than negatives at the weekend. Um, slightly interesting team selection from Steve Lovell again. He did decide to play three centre-backs, but he didn't play all three of them at centre-back as Alex Lacey was deployed as a holding midfielder in a 4-4-2 diamond system. But I suppose if uh, if you look at it, we picked up a point. It's the first time we've earned anything from a game, so in that respect, I guess it worked. Um, obviously, with 87 minutes on the clock, we, we conceded and went 2-1 down, and at that stage, it looked like it was going to be another frustrating, annoying defeat. Um, but from the low of that, we, we managed to find an equaliser through the big man who come off the bench, Tom Eaves. Um, in the 90th minute and there's even talk that we, we could have pinched it right at the end in injury time but uh, Josh Reese picked the wrong option unfortunately as we broke away and did have a, an overload on one side um, but a draw was probably the fairest result I think reading all the reports on social media and in the newspaper etc I think a, a win for us would have probably been harsh on the home side they, they bossed it for large periods and we had to be resilient um, obviously Ongoing concern is that we, we're still scoring, uh, still conceding to a game. Um, but the massive positive is we've got something out of it, uh, despite being under the cosh for long periods. Um, I've already mentioned him once. This man coming up on your screen uh, nicked his fifth goal of the season. That is, of course, Thomas Eves. Top scorer last season, top scorer at the moment this season. Uh, that was his fifth in 11 appearances this campaign and he's he's been on the bench for a few of them as well. So a decent return, regardless of what you think of him ability-wise. Um, he knows where the back of the net is um, and it'd be interesting to see where we were last season without him, without his goals. And again, this, um, because obviously his goal earned us a point at the weekend. His double against Burton early in the season earned us three points. Um... That was his 23rd goal in just 58 appearances for the football club. Um, 0.4 per game, so you can't argue with that. I mean, over a season, it works out probably to pretty much what he was doing last season, and that's scoring around 17, 18, 19 goals, which um, I think we all take every day of the week. So, um, fantastic return, considering he was a free transfer summer of 2017. Um, he looks like he's odds on to get double figures again this season. I mean, if he gets a run of starts and starts playing more minutes. I think he's only going to go from strength to strength. Um, Steve Lovell says, I'm pleased for him. He knows what the situation is. I did it last year. I left him out for a few games and he's come back with some goals. Hopefully it will be the same again. He makes an impact when he starts well. It's just sometimes he has that inconsistency. I said to him before the game, you know the reason why you're not in the team. I needed for him to take a break, a little bit of a backseat and come back refreshed. He went on and got that goal. Tom brings us something different and the opposition centre-halves don't like. He took his goal really well. Um, I'm a big fan. Some people aren't. That's fine. I think he's. I think he's been first class ever since he's arrived. Um, I don't buy into this thing about how he spends too much time in wide areas. Um, his goal returns second to none at this level. I think most teams, if they had a striker that's scoring at the ratio, is then they're going to be doing all right. And um, if we can get a few others to pitch in with, with a few, then. I still think we'd be okay. I think we're in a false position. I, I, I know we've not been on, on a great run of form, but um, I'm still confident that this, this squad is, is capable of finish, finishing around mid-table. Um, obviously, like anything, if you're struggling and, and the longer these runs go on where you don't pick up wins, confidence drops um, and it becomes harder. So we need a win desperately. Um, but there were positive signs on Saturday. There, there were some negatives as well. Um, but let's not dwell on them too much. Um, let's look at the good points, and that is that it was a battling draw, stopped the rot, um, picked up a point away, because um, I think it was three defeats on the spin before then. Um, but it's going to get harder next week. We've got Portsmouth on Saturday, and they are top of the league at the moment. So, um, But yeah, in terms of goals and me, I sort of already mentioned it, that we need others to chip in. Brandon Hanlon got his second of the season, um, which was good to see. Uh, put us in front at 1-0 up. Um, Proper scrappy striker's goal, I suppose. That's what you want. Proper Steve Lovell's spoken about it plenty of times. He wants his strikers in the six-yard box, able to poach and pinch goals. And 
Brandon's done exactly that. I, I mean, I think his play generally this season deserved more than just two strikes. I mean, if you go back to the the Burton game when he hit the post, he hit the bar and did everything but score and he could have had a trick on another day. Um, I think he's been really, really impressive since he came in and uh, he offers us something a little bit different to big Tom Eaves and, and Connor Wilkinson types. I mean, he's, he's out and out pace, out and out power. Um, and I think he's settled in really well, which is good. Um, as always, Luke Cordell's report, final paragraph. Gillingham ended the losing run with this point. Whether it was deserved or not, they need to build on it and find a way of getting three. It's twice in a row they have failed to hold on to a lead and it's something they can't afford to keep doing correct. But if you're going to flip it the other way, it's it's twice. Uh, sorry, it's, it's, a, it's a game where we could easily have just sunk and, and not got anything out of it. Um, considering the run we are on, but we but we didn't. We dug in and we managed to earn a point despite not being at our best. Um, like I say, Portsmouth on this, this coming Saturday is going to be an altogether, an altogether different task, but you can only take it one game at a time. Um, but yeah, back to Tom Eaves. Scoring felt great. That's the headline inside Monday's Medway Messenger. Saturday's equalising goal was extra special for Gillingham striker Tom Eaves. He was desperate to hush the Shrewsbury fans and did that as he fired home a 90th minute goal for Gillingham. Eaves had twice played for Shrewsbury on loan, but his efforts weren't appreciated by a section of their fans. It felt great, I can't lie, said Gillingham's leading scorer. They give me loads every time I go there for no reason. I was dying to score, to be honest. Those fans give me absolute loads, so I couldn't wait to put the ball in the back of the net. Scoring felt great. I was on there. I was there on loan. First time I did pretty well. The goals helped them stay up that year. The second time, not so well, but I always gave everything. Um, I think he, 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 he seems to have spent most of his career proving points to people, but for me, he's, he's got nothing to prove in terms of his capabilities at this level. I've said it a hundred times, and I'll say it again. He's, he's been very, very good since he arrived at the football club, and Christ knows where we'd be if he, if he took his 23 goals away. So, um, But yeah, I mean, that's enough about Tom and him as an individual. Um, love all praises, fighting spirit. That's another headline inside. Um, it was a very sort of stop-start game. I think there was delay to kick off because uh, one of the goal nets was broken. Um, and then Thomas Holy and Gabriel Zaquani had extensive treatment during the first half. So I don't think the, the first half didn't finish until about 10 minutes after most games in League One. And then the second half was delayed a bit longer the start because Thomas was having to have his bandage re, um, redone on his head because he cut his head open. Um, so yeah, again, it, it points again that there's, there's, there's some resilience in this Jules team and we just need a bit of luck. And we all know all too well that when, you, when you're down the bottom and not playing well that the fine lines you always end up on the wrong side of, but maybe that late equaliser is just a, a little bit of a flip and a turn and fingers crossed we can start picking up more points more regularly. Um, whether that's at Fratton Park this Saturday remains to be seen because it's going to be really, really tough. But um, after that, uh, we have a home game against South End, so hopefully we can pick up something there and start climbing the table again because, as I've already said, I don't think this is a squad that, that should be battling relegation in the bottom four. I think they should be halfway up, so... Um, but you only get halfway up by winning football matches, don't you? So we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, in terms of Steve Lovell again, I was very pleased. He said they worked hard and did well in the first half to go into the lead. We had a couple of good opportunities as well, but Shrewsbury threw everything at us and we defended really well. I was disappointed to concede the equaliser and the second goal was a killer blow to us, but it shows the character we have. People want to roll their sleeves up and keep going and Mr Ease came on and got our goal. The positives are the point, the attitude of the boys. They kept going right to the end and got their equaliser. Yes, I mean, as I've said, there are clearly deficiencies within this team at the moment. I've said half a dozen times in the last few weeks that this desperation to be on the front foot and play positive attacking football has meant that we've lost a lot of defensive solidity and, and we need to get the balance right because we are still conceding two a game. Um, I think we now conceded the second highest amount in the division. Nope, still third. Rochdale have conceded 23 We've conceded 20, Oxford have conceded 21. Um, so it is a problem. It's a big problem. We cannot go, we simply cannot go through the whole campaign conceding to a, to a game because we've only scored 13, which means we're losing effectively 2 1 every game. And that's why we're in the bottom four at the moment. So something has to change there. Um, but yeah, I mean, the fixtures that are coming up are. Aside from Portsmouth, I think I think there's a couple of ones where you think, well, we might be able to get some bits, but then we said that in September against Wimbledon and Coventry, and we only picked up one from six. So 
but it's up to us, it's up to the players, it's up to us as fans to get behind them, home and away, which we do. Um, and in terms of injuries, unfortunately, Bradley Garmson's the latest to pick up a knock. Um, he limped out on Saturday and was replaced by Barry Fuller at left back because Conor Ogilvy was already injured. Um, but yeah, not not too much of a long one tonight. Um, like I say, probably slightly more positive than negatives from the, the draw at the weekend. Um, and yeah, biggest thing is it stops the rot. So hopefully we've turned a corner slightly, but I'm not going to get too ahead of myself and say we're going to go for and Park and win easily. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for sharing, retweeting and all that. Um, we're we'll back Thursday for um, weekly review slash Portsmouth preview. And then we will be at Fratton Park on Saturday for match day live. Fingers crossed, it's, um, if it's anywhere near as good as last season, then we're in for a decent afternoon. But I think Portsmouth are a slightly different animal now. Um, won seven of their first ten and have only and have drawn three, so they're not lost yet. Um, and that's why they're top of the table. They score plenty, they don't concede a lot, so it's going to be tough. But we will be there. Um, but yeah, that's enough from me tonight. And until next time, up the jewels.